Voronoi diagrams are super useful in computer graphics for generating patterns that resemble things like rocks or a collection of cells, and the 3D equivalent is used for destructible geometry. It also works great for generating a lava surface like this one, so in this tutorial, I want to show you how the Voronoi function works, then use it to create a lava shader, complete with emissive lava streams and solid chunks of rock in between. Check out the GitHub repository which contains all the files you need for the effect, or follow along if you want. Voronoi works by distributing control points on a plane, then for each position on the plane, we work out what the closest point is and do something with that information. Sometimes people colour each pixel based on which control point was closest, and other times people colour each pixel based on the distance from the closest point. We're going to colour pixels based on the distance from the closest boundary between regions, which is a bit more difficult but definitely doable in Unity. Shader Graph comes with a Voronoi node, which outputs two things the distance from the nearest control point, and a random value for each region, which you could then turn into a random RGB colour. However, it doesn't output any information about the edges separating those regions. You can try and extract information about the edges, perhaps by using a DDXY node which finds gradients between adjacent pixels, but that, well, it looks bad, and you can't customise the width of these edges at all. To get this edge information, we'll need to write our own custom Voronoi node with an HLSL file, which you'll need to create with an external text editor, just to make sure you give the file the HLSL extension. If you're allergic to code and you just want to use Shader Graph, then the file will be available on GitHub along with the rest of the project, so just copy that and skip to the next section of the video. My custom node will output the distance from the closest control point and the distance from the closest edge, but not the random value for each region which Shader Graph's Voronoi outputs. I'm basing this on code by Inigo Kales, a fantastic shader person who's been doing this longer than I've been alive. I've linked the relevant article in the description. Uh, essentially, we divide the whole plane into cells of equal size and generate a random control point within each cell, using the lower left corner position of the cell as a random seed. Every time you input the same corner position into the random function, you get the same control point position. I stole the random function from ShaderGraph's built-in Voronoi node implementation. For each pixel, we run two passes over the cells. First, we set a distance from centre variable to some arbitrary large value, then loop over the nine nearest cells, where the central cell contains the pixel. If the distance between the pixel and the cell's control point is less than distance from centre, then we overwrite the distance from centre with that distance value and remember the offset vector between the pixel and the control point. That will be important later. After the loop finishes, distance from center gives us the same output as Shader Graph's built-in Voronoi node. The second pass attempts to find the second closest control point. If the first closest and second closest control points are an equal distance from the pixel, then the pixel rests exactly on an edge. So the second pass sets a distance from edge variable to an arbitrarily large value, and then we loop over the same nine cells as before. If this cell contains the closest control point, then this normalize function tries to normalize a zero vector because the offset is exactly the same as the one we kept track of in the first loop. So it returns infinite, and this line evaluates to a huge number. It's a really smart way of filtering out the closest cell because we're trying to find the second closest cell. Anyway, if it's not the first closest cell, this line finds the distance of the pixel from one of the edges, and if it's smaller than the distance from edge variable, we'll overwrite distance from edge. And that's the custom code sorted. Now it's time to work this into shader ref somehow and actually make the lava effect with it. In Unity, I made a new graph via create shader graph urp lit shader graph and named it lava. Inside the graph, I'll begin by adding a custom function node, then I'll drag the custom voronoi.hlsl file onto the source field here. The name should be the same as the hlsl function we wrote, minus the underscore float bit, so that's custom voronoi. 
Then we need to add the outputs and inputs to match those we used with the function. The inputs are the same as Shaded Grass built in the Roanoi node, being a vector2 UV and two floats called angle offset and cell density. Then the outputs are two floats, namely the distance from center and distance from edge that we calculated in the code. We're going to create the graph outwards from here, as there are parts that come before and after this node. For the shape of the rock islands and the width of the lava channels, we'll need five graph properties, all of which are floats. The island's density will control the size of the cells we use in our calculations, which in turn impacts the physical size of the rock islands. The angle offset is going to control how far the cell control points move from some start point. If this is zero, then we'll end up with a completely regular grid. Angle change speed controls how quickly the angle offset increases. If we want the rock islands to change shape over time, then set this to something above zero. Finally, we have the thickness, which refers to the width of the lava channels, and the thickness fall off, which blends the lava and the rock slightly. For our custom Voronoi node, angle offset, let's multiply our angle change speed property by time and add the angle offset property. Now the shape of our cells will change over time if you set the speed above zero. The cell density input can just use our island's density property. For now, if I use a UV node in the UV slot, you'll see the preview animating, but we'll do something more complicated for the UVs later. Next, we'll be using the distance from edge output and applying a threshold. Specifically, I want to use a threshold with a slight fall off so that we can have a small transition zone where the rock turns into lava, so I'll use a smooth step node. For edge 1, I'll use the thickness property, and for edge 2, I'll add thickness to the thickness fall off property. Then for the in value, I'll use distance from edge from the custom Voronoi node. This gives us a sort of mask that we can use to pick between displaying rock and displaying lava. Next, I want to go back a bit and modify the UVs we use for the custom Voronoi node. Even if you set angle change speed to zero, I want there to be some animation where the lava channels wiggle a bit to give the impression that there are some warmer currents flowing through the channels. Or something like that, I'm, I'm not a geologist. I'll add three more properties. One is a flow map, which is a texture 2D, which contains essentially directional information about which way each part of the lava will flow. The other two are both floats, the flow strength and the flow speed, which represent how far the lava gets displaced and how fast the shader scrolls through the flow map. The key thing for the flow map is to enable use tiling and offset in the node settings because the flow map I'm using is quite low resolution and I want to tile it. Let's multiply the flow speed by time and add it to a UV node, then use the result to sample the flow map texture. This collection of nodes will scroll the flow map over our mesh, but we're not doing much with the values yet. Each pixel of the flow map contains a 2D offset value that I want to apply to the UVs I use for the custom Voronoi node, so first multiply by flow strength, then add the result to another UV node, and use that result in the custom Voronoi node. Now we have the ability to add wiggle. There are three things remaining, sorting out the rock colours, the lava colours, and changing the lighting by modifying the normal vector. Let's start with the rocks. I'll need two properties for this, a rock colour and a rock texture. In my project and in the GitHub, I'm using rock and lava textures from ambientcg.com, which is an excellent source of CZ0 textures. Essentially, a license which is very similar to putting something in the public domain. I'll take the smooth step mask from before and use it for the interpolation factor t value of a LERP node. For the A slot, I'll use the colour black, so anywhere that's black on the mask is lava, and we don't want to use rock colours. For the B slot, I'll sample my rock texture property and multiply by the rock colour property. The LERP output can be used for the graph's base colour output because our rocks are regular objects that should have lighting applied normally. For the lava, it'll look slightly different. I'll add lava colour and lava texture properties, but I will also add a lava speed vector too, which will allow us to scroll the lava texture. This will make it appear as if the lava itself is flowing through the lava channels. 
The lava color should also have HDR enabled so that we can make the lava glow, as you would expect from lava. Similar to how we dealt with the rock areas, I'll use the smooth step mask in alert mode. This time I want to discount the white areas of the mask so the B input should be black. For the A slot, I'll sample the lava texture and multiply by the lava colour, but this time I'll also modify the UVs. Take the lava speed and multiply by time, then use the result as the offset of a tiling and offset node, which should then be connected to the UV slot on the sample node. The result of the LUB should be connected to the emission graph output, which means you'll see the colour even if you place the lava in a really dark cave or at night time. That just leaves the normal vector. Currently the rocks are all totally flat so it would be nice to add a bit of shape to them and the easiest way I can think of is to apply a normal map to the rocks. I'll do that by using the Voronoi pattern and turning it into a height map from which we can generate normal vectors. We'll need a new float property called height map strength for this. If we take the distance from edge output from the custom Voronoi node and subtract the thickness, then anywhere on the surface that should be lava will have a negative value, represented by black on the preview. Then with a saturate node, we can clamp those values to zero. That ensures that the lava areas will be flat while the rocks will be raised. We can use a normal from height node with the saturate output and the height map strength property, which generates a normal map with these trippy coloured patterns on the preview window. And to finish off the graph, let's connect its output to the normal block on the output stack. Oh, and one last thing I forgot, set the smoothness graph output to zero. Back in the scene view, all we need to do is apply a material to any object and we'll see the lava working as intended. As long as you have a bloom filter set up in your scene, which is possible in all Unity pipelines, the lava will glow if you use an HDR colour with an intensity above zero. Thank you so much for watching. My Patreon supporters are scrolling down the screen right now. If you become a patron today, then you can get early access to every shader video and bonus copies of my premium shader packs on itch. Until next time, and always, have fun making shaders.